Sia Budapest. How are you? Have you ever heard when people tell you to achieve something great in life, you need to dream big? How to do this? But I bet every one of you have heard many different ways of achieving that. There are many methods of it. Everyone is unique in their own way. The method that suits you is yours, actually. So try to imagine. Make a mental projection of what will be the end state of your goal. And Dave, Stephen Covey once said, begin with an end in mind. I had discovered that we all have gone through down the building blocks of success, but we just don't realize them. When I was a kid, I had an image of space in my head, and this made me happy. I do not know why. So I had to start somewhere. So the best thing that I could think of at that time was to draw. So I started by drawing an airplane's picture on my parents' wall. And this was an expression that I put back then to show that I was interested in flight. So it shows a thought process of thinking. And then later, during my elementary years, I started to wonder about flight. So begin with a kite. How does a kite fly? And I had think and had actually made one that eventually flew. So I had migrated from learning, thinking, to create. And this thought process is actually taught me how to make one, how to make a kite, and how this a kite could possibly fly. So with this thought process later, during my teen years, I said, if I could fly this and take it to the next level, I could achieve higher. I could fly higher. So what I did, I started experimenting with bottle rockets. Well, even though it's bottle rockets, but it's a fun science. And that time I won the state physics competition. So moving on, I said to myself again, let's take this to the next level. And I did that during my years at the university, just like any other students going to university, studying, and because I had this vision of space that I had built up, and I told to myself I would take other extra subjects just to complement that what is what relevant for me to reach space. So that is when I first started to build my own chemical-powered rocket. There are two variants that I've built, solid propellant and liquid propellant rockets. It wasn't just rockets that I built at that time. I was also making drones. So I had this idea that it was robots and rockets that is my passage to space. So I had made lots of friends along the way, very exciting friends. We exchanged and shared ideas where in this process, ideas are created more interestingly and achievable. So after graduating from mechanical and aerospace engineering, I started to work in the um, aircraft industry for three years. During that time, I was actually inspired by the Ansari X Prize, who were able to do what government agency used to do before. And right after that, I heard about the Google Luna X Prize. And what happened? I quit my job. So during this time, I had set up a company 
to join the Google Lunar Express, where I put an aim to launch Pico and Nano satellites into space. It was a crazy idea, but that was the target. So Google Lunar Express helped shape and mold me in this process. I faced two challenges, two major challenges. They are to overcome technical obstacles and the obvious one, funding. So during that point, how do we solve this? How do we make this project relatively lower cost compared to the entire Apollo program? Because we know they spend billions of dollars and how are we able to achieve this? So this is what we did. We actually took that problem and dissect it and broken, broke, it, broke it down to smaller projects where we could possibly solve them one at a time. Then, with this approach, we were able to see problems much clearer, clearer and easier. So, yes, we were inspired by the Apollo missions. And because of this Apollo space program, it actually created lots of spin-offs. And because of those spin-offs today, we have more computing power on the cell phone than on the entire Apollo mission. However, because of the spin-off, it doesn't mean it solves lots of problems in the world. There are still hunger and poverty across the globe. But how do we solve with the spin-off that we are already uh, having it today? So, the idea is, why don't we take this, this bunch of technologies, put them together, package them to create a new solution? So the new solution is like exactly what we call spin-off 2.0, which is able to provide solution rather than product itself. So you take all these tiny pieces of technologies, you put them together and package to provide a solution. So this solution could eventually solve lots of problems. And one of them you could see today, if you only have internet, electronics, basic power and water, you could actually do smart farming. So this is things that are possible. So in, in solutions like this, it actually motivates everybody, every one of us to say, hey, this is far much easier than I thought. Because if you look at it on a bigger scale, it's definitely difficult for you to solve them. But if you look it into a component level, in a smaller scale, that you think you can do it, so it's much achievable in that way. So one of the direct spin-off from spin-off 2.0 is precision farming. So what we intend to do with precision farming, if you see the colors on the field, they are green, which means that that area is fine. But the ones that we need to address are the, the other colors, such as uh, we need to address by adding more fertilizer, water, and stuff like that. So space technology has produced unprecedented new technologies that are available for us. And we should take this opportunity to pull them together as a package and to solve. How do you do it? There are three steps. You learn, you think, and create. So, learn what are the available technologies from the previous spin-offs. Think how you integrate and package them to make a new solution. And lastly, create the solution. So, if we could use this method to create a solution for us to reach to the moon, we could also possibly use the same solution to create a better world for tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>